Hi and uh, welcome back to Wix Biochemistry once again and this time we will be discussing the membrane transport and this will actually form a brief introduction to plasma membrane transport that is transport of materials across plasma membrane uh, and uh, the, the topics involved in this, uh, in this will be dealt in detail in future lectures. Now before we go on to see the transport of uh, uh, substances across membrane, plasma membrane, we have to have an idea of the structure of plasma membrane which is shown here. Now uh, it's a lipid bilayer as shown here uh, with the phospholipids, the head of the phospholipids which are which form hydrophilic head uh, turn towards extracellular fluid as well as towards intracellular fluid and the hydrophobic tail uh, actually forms the hydrophobic core of the lipid bilayer and there are other molecules also like cholesterol and this membrane is selective, selectively permeable which means that uh, uh, hydrophobic molecules are generally permeable which get dissolved in this membrane and get transported while water soluble or hydrophilic substances are generally impermeable. In fact the important function of the membrane is to prevent unwanted molecules from passing through it. Now we can see that there are uh, some proteins, the peripheral proteins which are uh, extrinsic proteins and intrinsic proteins and uh, some integral proteins also. Integral proteins which lie along the length of the membrane which are also called transmembrane proteins. And uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, important function of these integral membrane proteins um, are that they can act as receptors, ion channels and carriers which form important molecules in transport of materials across this plasma membrane. Now first of all let us see how membrane transport is classified. Uh, it may be uh, by passive transport or by active transport or by endocytosis and exocytosis also. Now for passive transport means it's a downhill transport which means the molecules from a higher concentration it is transported to a lower concentration. And uh, there is no, obviously there is no expenditure of energy involved in passive transport. It may be by diffusion. Uh, diffusion can be simple diffusion or a specialized kind of diffusion called osmosis. And there is facilitated diffusion also. Facilitated diffusion involves carrier proteins. Uh, it may be uh, carry, I mean, uh, transport proteins. It may be carrier protein or channel protein. And uh, mm, this obviously unlike, uh, unlike diffusion, uh, facilitated diffusion do not involve uh, the molecules to be transported getting dissolved in hydrophobic membrane. So they, uh, the, the molecules do not get dissolved in hydrophobic membrane during facilitated diffusion. Then there is active transport which is, uh, which is uphill, which is uh, an uphill uh, type of uh, transport which means uh, molecules are transported from a lower concentration, a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration obviously expenditure of energy in the form of ATP is involved. It may be a primary active transport which directly uses energy or a secondary active transport which indirectly uses uh, energy. Uh, then uh, there is endocytosis and exocytosis which involves transport of larger bigger molecules with the uh, expenditure of more energy. So let us uh, see uh, passive transport at first. Now and the passive transport uh, can be diffusion and uh, diffusion may be simple diffusion or a, a special kind of uh, diffusion namely osmosis. Now simple diffusion is, uh, uh, is like this. Solute particles move in a concentration gradient like this. Because these molecules uh, collide with each other, they, they, uh, they move from a region of higher concentration to low concentration with this energy of collision. So this is what happens and molecules dissolve in, when, when they are transported, molecules dissolved, uh, are dissolved in hydrophobic phospholipid bilayer and diffuse across the bilayer. So this is a very slow process also. At equilibrium, the net diffusion will be zero and uh, there are a lot of examples like respiratory gas exchange, elimination of waste, absorption from intestine uh, are some of the examples. Now, a special kind of diffusion is osmosis. Uh, where, where uh, the, the, the uh, solvent molecules, mainly water, in biological systems it is mainly water or any other solvent which is passed from its higher concentration, a uh, region of high con higher concentration to uh, a region of its lower concentration. So obviously solvent moves from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution and it involves a semi-permeable membrane also. So this is uh, this is the difference between a simple diffusion and osmosis. Uh, this is solvent is moved 
and as also there will be the presence of semi permeable membrane and uh, and then there is osmotic pressure which is a pressure uh, required to be applied to stop osmosis and uh, the next one uh, in line is facilitated diffusion now facilitated diffusion uh, it depends on concentration gradient as we know or electrical gradient and this involves transport proteins called carriers or channels the carriers will carry the molecule to the opposite side whereas the channels will uh, act like tunnel through which molecules can just pass under certain conditions and this uh, uh, actually does not involve molecules getting dissolved in hydrophobic core as I said so there is no interaction with the hydrophobic interior and carriers and channels are involved which act differently from each other during a transport of uh, molecules and uh, larger polar and uh, larger uh, uh, charged molecules can also be transported Carrier mediated facilitated diffusion is also described as ping pong mechanism uh, because carriers exist in two different structural conformations uh, like ping and pong and uh, the substances which are transported include glucose, amino acids, uh, nucleosides, nucleotides etc. Now what is uh, shown here as an example is a GLUT uh, transporter, glucose transporter family of glucose transporters and there are family of glucose transporters namely GLUT 1, 2, 3, 4 like that and one of them is shown here you can see glucose uh, on the outside comes and attaches to this particular uh, site on the glucose transporter and as it attaches the structural conformation is changed it's just not an inversion the structure is changed the structural conformation is changed as the structural conformation is changed what happens is that the affinity for glucose is lost for this uh, for this uh, particular transporter and uh, glucose is released uh, on the inside of the cell so this is what happens and uh, this is actually a uniport mechanism uh, because uh, the transport involves one type of molecule only and uh, it involves transport in one direction only now channel mediated facilitated diffusion involves uh, the, the channels which can be imagined like tunnels uh, which are open which can be opened or closed as the condition may be there are aquaporins and ion channels uh, now first of all aquaporins aquaporins are certain uh, certain protein carriers which are exclusively meant for uh, transport of water molecules and uh, these are tetrameric proteins and they transport water uh, in response to osmotic gradients also uh, these are uh, present in almost all glands and organs and uh, and uh, tetrameric proteins and uh, these are actually faster than diffusion also in carrying water molecules from outside to inside and uh, we can uh, learn more about aquaporins in one of the future lectures the second type of facilitated diffusion is uh, through ion channels as we said uh, it involves the tunnels uh, which are having gates also and the gates can be ligand gates or voltage gate or ligand gated or voltage gated and uh, these are extremely rapid uh, maybe a thousand times more rapid than carrier protein uh, mediated facility diffusion it's a highly this is highly selective also a million ions per second can be carried so this is the, that much fast and the fundamental role of these gated channels is uh, in uh, transmission of uh, nerve impulses uh, ligand gated channel is shown here and uh, the action of acetylcholine ligand uh, here in the, in the this synaptic vesicles on gated receptor on post synaptic membrane so this is a receptor so when this molecules the acetylcholine neurotransmitter molecules are released what happens is that when released these receptors are induced and they open so when they are open what happens is that the sodium ions can get into this membrane so uh, when acetylcholine binds to receptor the channel is opened and the sodium ions are let into post synaptic nodes so as to generate action potential there. Facilitated diffusion through voltage gated ion channel can typically be seen during uh, transmission of nerve impulses. Here the change in membrane potential that is the voltage difference is, uh, is what switches the ion channels to open or close voltage gated sodium or potassium channels are the most common as occurs in nerve cells and are involved in transmission of nerve impulses as you can see here outside positive inside negative the resting potential at minus 70 millivolts 
both sodium and potassium channels remain closed. But during depolarization at around negative 45 or 50 millivolts, the sodium channels are open, potassium cha channels remain closed. And around 30, uh, plus 30 millivolts, sodium channel is closed, but potassium channel is open. And again, uh, thrusting potential, both of them remain closed. And now the active transport. Now active transport, uh, obviously expenditure of energy is involved. Uh, it is against a concentration gradient and uh, involves transport of uh, ions as well as large molecules. And uh, it may be a primary active transport or a secondary active transport. The primary active transport, uh, actually it involves direct usage of energy. And the example given is that of sodium potassium antiport. And secondary active transport involves uh, not involve direct usage of energy and the example given here is uh, glucose sodium symport. Let us see first of all sodium potassium antiport. So this is the mechanism of sodium potassium antiport. The simultaneous transport of uh, two different molecules in opposite direction occurs here. The binding of sodium actually stimulates ATP dependent uh, phosphorylation of the pump here. And the phosphorylation exposes the sodium binding site to the cell surface and lowers the binding affinity of uh, uh, this uh, transporter to sodium. So sodium is released outside the cell. And at the same time, two potassium molecules binds to the high affinity sites on the uh, on this particular transport molecule. And uh, binding of potassium actually dephosphorylates the pump. So phosphor, phosphor, for the phosphate group is lost from this uh, pump and thus uh, actually return to the original conformation thus releasing potassium inside the cell. So this is how uh, the mechanism, antiport mechanism of uh, sodium and, and potassium works. Now let us see how uh, symport mechanism works. This is a secondary transport uh, because it involves indirect in expenditure of energy and then uh, this is actually mostly to externalize one of the molecules generally uh, to externalize one of the molecules that got into the cell. Now. The core transport or symport of sodium and glucose together is drawn here. Now this involves simultaneous transport of two different molecules in the same direction. Uh, as you can see, sodium and glucose are taken together to the interior. As you can see, the intercellular human is having plenty of glucose, uh, I mean, uh, 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 sodium in it. So that is transported along with that glucose also is uh, transported like this. So here. Uh, energy is actually used up for removing the extra sodium ions that got into the cell. Now you can see the processes of uh, endocytosis and exocytosis. Now uh, endocytosis definitely involves both of them. Endocytosis and exocytosis uh, definitely involves energy, expenditure of energy in the form of ATP. And uh, endocytosis involves uh, calcium ions also. The material during endocytosis, the material to be taken in, carried in, makes contact with the cell, cell surface. Uh, which then invaginates that is plasma membrane is invaginated and closing the matter and this forms uh, what is called endocytic vesicle uh, and endocytosis may be cell eating that is uh, solid particles are taken in du during phagocytosis and liquid particles cell drinking phenocytosis uh, takes care of liquid particles now first of all phagocytosis phagocytosis uh, can be demonstrated here the mechanism is like this the cell extends pseudopodia here it surrounds the particle membrane fuses to form intracellular vesicle which is called phagosome to which uh, lysosome is fused so as to form phagolysosome which is digested and uh, in living cells this is uh, primarily employed or it can be employed to destroy, ba destroy bacteria the mechanism of a pinocytosis is demonstrated here. Uh, it obviously involves clathrin coated uh, pits. Uh, here, this protein is uh, the coat protein is clathrin, a particular protein, and there will be receptors also. Receptors will be present in the pits also. So, clathrin coated pits uh, will be there, and receptors will take up these molecules uh, to be absorbed, and it forms what is called clathrin coated vesicles and uh, the materials will be digested, digested or used up. Uh, actually, clathrin coated uh, and receptor mediated endocytosis is operated both in phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Uh, and after absorption of the content, the receptors are sent back to the cell surface. 
The process of exocytosis actually involves release of macromolecules to the outside of the cell. And the mechanism is demonstrated here. This is also called reverse pinocytosis sometimes. Now, the membrane of the vesicle, the vesicle is formed with the contents to be released and the membrane of the vesicle uh, fuses with the plasma membrane. Actually, the, the inner membrane of the vesicle fuses with the outer plasma membrane as you can observe here and, and the contents of the vesicle are externalized. And in one of the uh, examples we have already uh, saw uh, in one of the examples uh, earlier, the synaptic vesicle containing neurotransmitter is released through exocytosis. Now, uh, just to go through this passive, the difference between passive and active transport and uh, as well as uh, the difference between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion.